The debt relief order is really for people who have debt under £15,000, which Audrey does have. And do you find the DROs are working from your point of view and, and from people's point of view? Yeah, I mean, they're quite a quick way to become debt free um, and the fee is cheaper. There's no court appearance. So, yeah, it works very well. Audrey says her debt relief order means she can pick up her life free of past debt and she's not concerned about who knows she's declared herself insolvent. Well, it's the beginning of May, as you know, and the DRO has been, it's gone through. So I'm hoping come um, maybe the summer, you know, I get a haircut, <laughs> you know, I can start living again, you know, I can, I can start, I feel a bit better about myself, really. Something you know. as simple as that, a haircut, now that you're debt-free. Yeah. A haircut and a, a steak, <laughs> a meal, I'd love to go out for a meal. I haven't been out, I haven't been socialising in a long time, you know. I don't want big things, I just want to be living again, you know. Audrey's an example of the system working well, but DROs aren't much use to people with bigger debts like mortgages. Gareth Neal is an insolvency practitioner in Belfast and he says he's never been busier. His aim is to keep people out of bankruptcy by using another method of insolvency, the Individual Voluntary Arrangement, or IVA. The typical client that will come into us, they will have 30, 40,000 pounds of debt, and what they will do is we will look at their income, look at their expenditure, and look to see if they have something that they available to offer to creditors, should it be 200 pound a month, 300 pound a month, and they pay that over a period of five years. And for that, over five years then that gives them money and that is used in full and final settlement of their debt. But I've come to meet one man who says he found life like this intolerable. He'd run a small family business, which by the time it had failed, had left him hundreds of thousands of pounds in debt. He was advised to take the IVA route in order to avoid going bankrupt. He is currently working and wants to remain anonymous. Five years, whilst it sounded good at the time, once you got a year and a year and a half in, it, it was really, really difficult to, to, to maintain the payments every month with the constant big brother approach of them, how every pound that you owe is spent. Some of the questions went right down to what you, what you spend on your lunch on a daily basis, what it costs to cut your hair, and um, how much you spend in magazines to see what money was left that they could claim to put into the, the IVA, what pocket money you give to your children. He says the payments were so demanding that eventually he couldn't afford them. He fell into arrears and as a consequence, just a few weeks ago, he was in fact made bankrupt, the very thing he tried to avoid. I spent two and a half years through insolvency culminating in, in bankruptcy and it's, it's two and a half years I would never want to relive again in my life. I have been declared bankrupt and I have a, I have a date that my bankruptcy will come to an end in, but at this minute in time I feel a wee bit more comfortable with my life that I can take it forward um, other than the terrible stigma of having to admit that you're, you're bankrupt and, and, and to sit in front of you anonymously, that shows you that the stigma is very real. Talking about the scale of your debts isn't just a stigma for people like him. Our politicians have been keeping very quiet about the billion pound black hole we've discovered. You know what I find amazing about the North, and I travel there all the time, is that whereas in the South this is the daily diet of radio talkings and TV and people in the pub behind us, right? In the North, you could swear that none of this is happening. Why, and, and you say, and then why doesn't the government make this even more widespread? Why would I inject into the economy of Northern Ireland further uncertainty and further alarm? My job is to try and build confidence in the economy. As an economist, the one thing I do know is that if you destroy confidence, you destroy people's willingness to spend, you, dest you destroy their willingness to invest, you destroy their willingness to start new businesses, you make a situation worse. I don't want to make a situation worse, I want to make the situation better. So we so, don't talk about it? Uh, no, you deal with it. So how do you deal with a problem this big? Official insolvency is designed to have an element of punishment. But with the scale of the debt now in the system, some say that approach has to be put aside. And instead, lenders should be showing what's called debt forgiveness. You have to have debt forgiveness. I mean, the idea that 
you lend me money and you do no credit checks on me, really, and the reason you're lending me money is because your man over there will lend to me if you don't, so you want market share. And I go off and I come back in a few years' time and say, do you know what, I lost my job and the house I bought is worth 50% less. The notion that you'll get paid back in full or you expect to get paid back in full is ludicrous. Sammy Wilson agrees to an extent. As our soaring debt levels show, ordinary people have little hope of paying back what they owe in full. It turns out he's even told banks in Northern Ireland he wants to see debt forgiveness. That's an issue which um, they, they weren't madly keen on, as I'm sure you'll understand. And, you know, the question that they would present, of course, is, well, who's debts do you forgive and whose do you not forgive, etc. Uh, but I think it is an issue which increasingly we're going to have to um, be looking at. Debt forgiveness means sidestepping the penalties brought by insolvency and getting the banks to accept that they can't get back all that they're owed. Getting them to lower the debt, something bankers refer to as a write-down. So my view is that, listen, let's cut all this nonsense out. I can't pay it, you lent too much money, Let's get in a room, lock the door and do a deal. Finito. End of. Rather than this idea that in some five years' time you will have learnt and we will have learnt. It's, it's nonsense. So at the moment, who gives debt forgiveness? We asked the big banks here. Each of them said they were willing to work with customers in trouble. But after that, information was thin. Danske said it doesn't write down any of its debts. Santander and HSBC said in exceptional circumstances they do. The others wouldn't give a direct answer. But we found out that those banks are doing it. It's just done quietly and behind closed doors. There does appear to be um, a, a discrepancy in the way the banks deal with it. In some cases, people who owe them huge amounts of money and haven't, haven't a chance of ever paying it seem to be left alone by them. Uh, others who perhaps don't do them quite as much but have got a viable business and have got a business uh, which or maybe have an asset which has a cash flow from it, they're the ones who are being tortured. And ironically, they're probably the ones who could best weather the storm if they were given a wee bit more sympathy. And without a clear system for getting debt forgiveness, it seems it's actually all about who you know. And there are people who now claim they can get it for you. It seems to be a sensational thing to say that banks are writing off debt. It seems to be uh, something that you cannot say. However, for hundreds of years, the banks have been writing off debt. You know, if you're in the money lending game, it comes with the territory. Now, if you're running a bank, you're obviously not going to be advertising that that's what you're doing. So many people are in difficulty in Northern Ireland and the Republic that Connor's company is doing business, arranging quiet debt deals with banks in both places. And in their Dublin office, he's working with someone with a notorious past, a once rogue trader who's now joined him in cutting deals with our familiar high street banks. Mr Leeson, where are you going? In 1995, Nick Leeson was jailed for causing the spectacular collapse of the Barings Bank. He's now based in the Republic and says it's time for the banks to get real. At some stage, banks know that many of these loans are never going to be repaid because the values or, or, or the amount of mortgage or money that was lent against them is just preposterous in, in, in the current environment. You know, they are never ever going to be able to recover that sum of money. So something has to be done and that involves an element of write down. Connor Devine says his team is able to achieve deals for clients who still have some money left to afford their service. But the banks are continuing to demand their money back from others who can't get this kind of access. It seems that the bank's forgiveness can be very selective. Your clients, they're getting the debt forgiveness. The rest of them aren't. To, 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 uh, yeah, that, 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 that's probably true. I mean, if you, if you are willing to engage and communicate with the bank... in or a if you can. If you can, in a meaningful manner, I mean, it has to be professional. There's no point walking into a bank and saying, this is my situation, forgive me everything. It's not going to happen. Back in the home that's caused him so much trouble with his lender, Gary doesn't have the same choice. He says his mortgage company still won't listen to him. Pretty much all the significant debt you have is because of this. Well, where we're sitting now, yeah. all of this is a massive, massive debt to you now. Yeah. That's it. 
how does that feel just when you're walking through your kitchen you know and did this place here has caused you such debt I love the house if I could take the house and put it anywhere else I would I would suck it in maybe it's just it's hard it's hard Gary says he's disappointed that banks and lenders seem to have one approach for some and a different one for others like him. If I could get a deal like that in the next few months, it would relieve so much pressure. But is it right that some get these deals no, and some don't? No, it's not. It's not right. If they can't pick and choose who they're going to help and who they're going to put under, no, that's not right. The stalemate people like Gary find themselves in underscores the need for a system of debt forgiveness, according to David McWilliams, one which is fairer and helps the wider economy. And this comes back to debt forgiveness, that you need to have a, an overarching system which speaks to the smaller people, the people who basically got into negative equity because they were trying to do the right thing. So the person with maybe 10 grand, 15 grand, 5 grand, 20 grand, they are the economy. The interesting thing is they are the people that make the economy work. But it's exactly those people who might be in for one more shock. News just last week that there'd been a slight increase in house prices here was greeted as a sign that borrowers might be starting the long journey out of negative equity. But it could actually mean more trouble for people who've fallen behind on their mortgage payments. Just because lenders aren't demanding them right away doesn't mean they're forgiving those debts. They have up to six years in which they can pursue that. So I suspect what they're doing is they're waiting to see if and how the client's circumstances will improve in order that there may be some significant chance that they will then get some, at least some of the money back. Insolvency worker Gareth Neal agrees. He says he's seen this unfortunate consequence of recovery before. There will be an increase in insolvencies, probably my guess is about six or seven months after we see the green shoots of recoveries. Why? Because the creditors will potentially start taking action at that stage and repossessions, house price increase, it's more attractive uh, to take repossession of the property. Hopefully not. For those who've already felt the full force of insolvency, what they've lost in money, they say they've gained in wisdom. It's not worth worrying about it, don't worry about the stigma attached to it, go for it, you know, you have, you have to start living again, you know, you can't be like me, shut yourself away. People will talk, oh look, he, he's lost his car, they take, came and take, had, taken his car, oh, they've lost that there, they've lost, they've lost this as well, but once you've crossed that um, bridge, life moves on. Like so many with debt problems in Northern Ireland, Gary is living more in hope. An expectation. I still hope to get a deal. I would still, would still love to, them to phone me and say, right guy, we owe, you owe us this, that's the arrears. Let's sort something out. Let's sort the payment out here. That's all I'm asking them to do. They're going to get their money back off me. That's what I want to do. The property crash has blighted the lives of countless individual people. But the fear now must be that the burden of debt will continue to crush our economy as a whole for many years to come. For details of organisations which offer advice and support on debt issues, go online to bbc.co.uk slash action line or call the BBC Action Line to hear recorded information on 0800 888 809. Lines are open 24 hours a day, are free from a landline, mobile operators will charge.